Hello everyone and come back. I'll come back to the Techno Innovation Hub. It's going to be another session from Oracle Portal. Let me share the screen. The continuation of the Oracle uh, database architectural journey. I think uh, we have done this one. The last session was about uh, shared pool. So we discussed about the shared pool, uh, memory structures, the caches within shared pool. In this session, as the next memory structure, we are going to deep dive large pool. Large pool. So let's start large pool. So that is our next memory structure we are going to deep dive. So large pool is an optional memory area that database administrators can configure to, yeah. So it is an optional area. So optional, not a must, but if we configure it, even for a standalone database, there are benefits. Okay, so what it says, optional memory area that administrators can configure to provide large memory allocations for the following. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, uh, we know shared pool is there to support for certain certain operations which are happening within the database and we know the buffer cache also there but still we have a deep dive buffer cache and we know the objectives and the purpose of shared pool buffer cache also we know a little bit but the thing is if these memory structures are running out of space and if large pool is defined so large pool will be supporting those so that's why it says for large memory allocations and extra additional memory allocations so it is a good thing if you have enough memory, if you have enough system memory, and if you have given sufficient memory for database, and you can always define large pool. But again, we have to discuss about uh, automatic memory management and all because large pool is not a memory structure that's automatically managed. And also it is not managed uh, as a least recently used The logic that memory managed within the large pool is not LRU, it is a different mechanism. So let's discuss on those things. And uh, so these are the situations where Oracle can utilize a large pool. The first thing is session memory for shared server. Yeah, that we know, uh, dedicated server configuration and shared server configuration, we have learned. So on the shared server environment, we are aware how Oracle is going to handle the UGA, user global area. User global area will be in shared memory. Uh, in a shared pool will be in shared pool if large pool is not defined but if large pool is defined UGA is going to occupy within large pool so that is how it goes not like dedicated environment in dedicated environment we have learned uh, within the PG only you are going to have a uh, user global area each PG will have a UGA separately but when it's come to shared environment the user global area will be defined within shared pool or large pool depending on the configuration. So that's what it says. And further it says, and the Oracle distributed transition, XA interface. So for that also, it is using large pool interface used where transitions interact with multiple databases. So let's talk about this one later, but uh, it's utilizing large pool for distribution transactions. Uh, we are for, with heterogeneous systems, so we discuss those things later. But the time being, just make an uh, just get an understanding about in a shared server environment, large pool is heavily used. So that is number one. And then number two, I/O buffer area. Yes, it's like this now. Input output operations. There are oh, examples are there in a situation like parallel query, big of parallelism is high. And even if for ARM and slave processors, you know, you can do backups. If a backup is very large, it's going for terabytes. And if it is a lengthy backup, taking more time, then you are definitely going to uh, use multiple channels with ARM, and multiple channels to do parallel operations. So in that case, IO intensive. The IO usage is very high. If large pool is defined, Oracle can utilize large pool. So it will speed up the backup operations as well. And not only that, even for parallel, parallel queries, because you know, for certain select queries, 
I mean, if the table is having millions, billions of records, so you can enable parallelism, degree of parallelism, depending on the number of cores you have and the memory, likewise. And if the large pool is defined, again, Oracle is going to make use of it. So parallel operations. So that's what uh, IO for heavy IO intensive operations is going to utilize. Then the third thing is uh, deferred inserts. Yeah, the pass in just feature. This is uh, actually uh, came in 19C. 18C also had this feature, but not fully implemented. Came in 19C. Deferred inserts. Now, for example, this is heavily in use. As for the explanation, you can see uh, there's example here IoT devices, Internet of Things, because IoT devices they are like using sensors and those uh, devices data is being sending continuously for example now let's say data from traffic lights so if uh, let's say you want to monitor traffic on a road then there are sensors sensors on the road which indicate the traffic information those information is going to continuously come at a continuous stream to a particular database so we need to capture those data. The data stream and the speed is very high. So I mean, uh, in IoT environment, this feature will be very useful because you cannot use the normal database flow. Now we know when you want to insert a record for a table, you just say insert into and likewise. No. So then what's going to happen? Oracle is going to go to the buffer cache and the redo logs and changes are captured and the commit operations happens. But for if the data stream is very fast, continuously coming, flowing very highly at a high speed, you can't go through this normal channel, going to buffer cache and all, that's not going to work. So that's why Oracle is uh, giving this feature, pass inges. Now this pass inges is not going to go to the normal database buffer cache operation. It's going to go to the large pool. It's going to utilize a large pool. But we need to define this one, uh, how it's work. Anyway, let's do a small hands-on for this since it's a new feature. I thought of just doing a demonstration. Now this feature initially it was available only on Exadata, but uh, with 19.12 version, you can use it. But even prior to 19.3 with a workaround, you can use that one, but this feature. Anyway, let's do a hands-on on this. So that's another feature, deferred insert pool pass inches both are the same They're just two different names uh, deferred insert pass inches and uh, it is utilizing large pool mem optimized for it is the hint uh, where you have to use when you insert in data for a particular table let's do the practical then you will understand it and this is like uh, example you can see if I, if I just read this line the pass inches feature enables high frequency single raw data insert into database tables defined as mem optimized for it. Yeah, because we know we can just create a table, create table, but when you want to use this pass in this feature, you have to create the table with this option, mem optimized for it. So you say create table and at the end you are telling mem optimized for it. For, the, for this database allocates buffers from large pool. That's what it is directly going going to utilize the large pool if you when you try to insert data for a such table which is uh, min optimized for it is enabled then what's going to happen oracle is not going to use the buffer cache to insert data for those tables it's going to utilize large pool now this is example example like for rapid fire and forget inserts from iot internet of things application internet of things applications so fire and forget is, if you have done uh, IoT programming, I think you know these things, but fire and forget is just a mechanism in uh, IoT we are using. It's kind of a, we know the publish and subscriber model is there, and it's kind of a quirky voice technique, fire and forget. I have given references for this, fast changes, mem optimize. Only for this one, you can check fire and forget. So this is what it says. Anyway, later also you can refer to this. I will be uploading this uh, PPT for you. Let me just increase the size a bit. Yeah, so this is what, now this is just example. We have the broker which 
the center point for the IoT configuration, and these are going to be the sensors. So uh, these are going to be the clients for this broker, and publish and subscriber model works in that way. And it, uh, those clients going to subscribe their messages to the broker. So likewise, uh, there's a configuration here, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to explain the full IoT because that's not the scope here. If you want to see what is this fire and forget concept, you have this one. You can see QoS, quality of service. Each connection can sim specify a quality of service to the broker uh, with, with an integer value ranging from zero to two. QoS does not affect handling of TCP data transmission only, uh, yeah, only between MQTT clients not in this example okay that's okay so this is what if the qos is zero then only we are telling fire and forget fire and forget means you don't wait for message to be acknowledged by the receiver you just send the message continuously and it acknowledgement can take place later that's what fire and forget just send the message and forget it that's what so there are techniques like that in the communication this is the mqtt is a protocol i think uh, in this document it is explained MQTT message queuing telemetry transport. It is a protocol which is used in uh, IoT environment heavily over HTTP, which is faster. So that is that anyway. So this feature, Oracle passenger feature, is heavily used in IoT environments. And let's uh, let me just show you more details for you to understand this one. It's like this. This one. Yeah, if I just click here, yes. Now this is another explanation for that. New feature, Oracle 19C, mem optimized raw store for passengers. I can just increase the size a bit. And this is from the Oracle product manager with uh, database inside the yes. And the, yeah, he is explaining this one. Now, this is how these are the IoT devices actually. So, sensors, smart meters, sensor data, traffic cameras. So, that's what I mentioned earlier the traffic data which are coming from cameras. So, everything will be captured through the application. To the application. And what's going to happen? Those data should be stored somewhere. Now, in case of Oracle, if the backend database is Oracle, and it's not going to go to the normal part like database buffer cache because we want when you want to insert data for a particular table the normal traditional mechanism is go to the database buffer cache insert get the um, allocate the buffers from buffer cache and uh, i mean it will update since it is a dm command uh, it will look buffer will get update and uh, oracle doesn't wait for the commit to write data to the the, the particular tables, so we you know the checkpoint mechanism and those things are there. Commit will confirm it, but that's okay. So that's a normal method. But when it's come to uh, deferred inserts, it doesn't go to database buffer cache. That's what I explained earlier as well. So it's going to large pool as batch rows, batch rows. So what's going to happen? Large pool is going to right away, right to the particular table and uh, there's a background process smco i think should be explained and these are the db writer processes it's going to update the database and now the verification also has to happen since it is not following the normal mechanism commits has no value here so that's why i mean uh, now somebody has to confirm that data is written to the tables underline no? so that's why there's an API given, right verification API, and it's going to communicate with the application. So the application will be have awareness, okay, data is written to the tables. That is uh, that one, and here is the practical role. So there, let's do a hands-on for this. I just want you to get an idea on that. And uh, if you want to get uh, more details about the background process and all, we have it here. Let me just take you to that one as well. If you go to this link, this is from Oracle documentation. You can see the background. This is the same explanation. Client now clients are we just learned the clients are the IoT sensor devices, and this is the middleware application, and this is the Oracle database large pool, and this is the process SMCU, and you will have multiple DB writer process which are parallel writing into the database table. SMCU 
Because I think the SMQ you can see this on stage management coordinator process as well. So that's a specific process which is going to handle this fast inches. Yeah, mem optimize right is the hint for the table insert. So you have to use that. Okay, so anyway, so let's uh, that is the third option. We are Oracle is going to use the large pool. Then the fourth option is for free memory. Yeah. So that's what I mentioned. Whenever there's a memory issue, uh, out of memory issue for Oracle database, it can utilize large pool. That's what if it is defined. And let's do the hands-on. Let's do a small practical for this uh, deeper insert so that you can get an idea. So let me just switch to my practical environment because uh, I just thought of demonstrating this one because it's a new feature. There are certain things to consider if you want to utilize this one. So this again, Andy is telling uh, product manager. You can see the mem optimized raw store for the past ingest feature was introduced in 19C. Correction, fast lookup was introduced in 18C. So that's why as a feature which goes closer to this, but it's a different feature. It is made up of two components, that is fast hinges. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what is okay. Fast uh, lookup and fast hinges. Initially, the feature was for XR data. That's what I mentioned. This feature was for available only for XR data and cloud environments. But now they are now available in non accelerated environments. So now available means from which version they are telling 19.12 release update, RU 19.12. So if you have the base version of 19.00 or 19.3, you have to update to 19.12 in order to use this feature and 21C and all. But it's still with workarounds, you can use this feature even with 19.3. I think the, our installation, if we just go back here, in uh, our installation, we are also in 19.3. Uh, yeah, I think I have understood. Let me just switch to Oracle. And our database is TNH19 CTB. I think it is correct. Let's get that one. No, it's not 19 CDP. Anyway, so let me check that one. I had to shut down this V, and that's why everything is down. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's check that one. It's good for you all also to get it revised now. So my database is you know one app oracle or our data is going to be TNS 19 DB. There is no C. That's why it gave the error because ORA ENV environment uh, setting has to have the correct name. So it's going to be TNS 19 DB. That's what my database name is. Okay, yeah, now we've got it correctly. Okay, let's find the wise the environment. But if I don't give this particular entry correctly, then it can't point to the correct Oracle form. We have learned those stuff earlier. Fine, now let's let me just check that one SPA plus CSAS SPBA. The main database should be down. Yeah, even in my case, I am even not having 19.3. We can see it is 19.00. Ah, uh, no, that's the release, but the version is 19.3. That's true. Base version. Yeah, I am using 19.3 version. Yeah. Let's start the database. Ready to start. Okay, fine. I can just run select star from V dollar version as well. Uh, 
typo. V E R S I O. You can use SQL wrapper where I haven't installed. If I use SQL wrapper, upper will get enabled, but I haven't installed here. Yeah, Oracle Database Enterprise Edition 93 production version 19.3. So that is where I am in at the moment. But we don't need to have release 12 uh, patch upgrade to utilize this feature. With a workaround, we can do. So let's see how we can use this uh, pass ingress feature. I have a document for this. Let's follow the document, launch pool, hands on. Yes. Let's follow this one and continue the practical. I'll upload this document for you to uh, do the hands on. Very first thing, if you want to see the current large pool allocations, we can take a look like this and just say show parameter large. You can see currently I don't have allocation for large pool, it is zero. And let's say large pool size. And if you want to see the mem optimize parameter, and now you know what is mem optimize the parameter which is allocating the required memory for pass start feature in large pool. So mem optimize uh, currently it is zero. This is the value currently it is zero. So I haven't enabled anything. Large pool is disabled. Mem optimize is uh, disabled. So let's start from this scratch. And the very first thing now, my objective here is to demonstrate and uh, to use the pass in this feature. Let's try to do that, the new feature. So the very first thing is create table. So this is what happens. If I want to use the pass in this feature, as I mentioned earlier, I have to tell Oracle this particular table is going to utilize that feature. So I am go how I'm going to tell it using this command you can see create table just the table name yeah that is okay this is the table name you can see in number and there are two columns and mem optimize for right so that is the specific tag i have to enable when i create in the table so otherwise you can just create a table but it won't enable that table to use this pass in this feature so i have to say mem optimize mem optimize for right Okay, so then as soon as I run this command, so this is, yeah, that's why this table is already there in my case. Let me uh, use name of one, so that will be okay. Let's stack one, already created, okay, right. Yeah, it said the table created, but now in my case, I need to verify a couple of things here because normally if you haven't enabled certain parameters, it will not get created like this. So in my case, since I think I have enabled those parameters, um, but Mem optimize for right feature. This is the error with when it comes, if, when the parameters are not enabled. Feature mem optimize is uh, row store is disabled, missing compatibility runtime environment. Now, the reason is there is a parameter to enable now this parameter mem optimize in my case this parameter the value was disabled right so i don't i didn't have a value show parameter mem optimize size the value is disabled right 
but it still it allowed me to create the table but if you're doing for the very first time so that's why i just want to demonstrate these things this is i have captured the error let's say you are enabling pass start in just teacher for the very first time then definitely you are going to get this error but again there's another parameter you have to enable this is the parameter so here you can see i have given the value here but you cannot give a value like that when you try to shut down the database and start again it gives this error work around is you have to enable another parameter called this one extra data parameter this is what okay so in my case i haven't i have enabled this parameter earlier but now we need to check whether the this parameter is enabled or not so let's verify that one as well i think just since this feature was extra data feature till 19c release 12 update so i am in my uh, base version 19.3 in my environment this feature won't work unless i do this work around the work around is this parameter i need to switch on this parameter auto system extra data feature on this is the parameter extra data feature on so in my case i think it is enabled because i did that practical earlier for testing let's check whether that parameter is uh, or no not so we need to take a look at a hidden parameter here so hidden parameters we can uh, i mean normally you can right away you can see in a normal query this query will give the hidden parameter i'm just setting the environment and column size and it's pulling also on in case if i want to uh, look at the log file there's a log file getting created but may not necessary let's switch to pull this key yeah so these are uh, there are 4964 hidden parameters anyway my parameter is extra data so this is z so let's go up everything starts from underscore so e is l k h yeah extra data so let's check around here parameter was extra data on extra data feature on this is the parameter so ex as i was checking exa extra data this is the parameter extra data feature on so at the moment my parameter is true i have enabled it but by default this parameter is false so since i have enabled only the feature worked but if i disable parameter in original environment so what it will be like this so you will be definitely getting an error in your environment if you are trying this practical for the very first time the error will be this feature mem optimized raw storage disabled due to missing incomplete runtime environment so why i didn't get that error because i have enabled that parameter and uh, even though there is no value for uh, mem optimized Full size. Since the parameter is enabled, it won't give that error. This error won't come. So anyway, so let me disable that parameter and show the original uh, error. Then it will be helpful for you. Anyway, now this session is going for too long. Let me come back into the next session. So I'll uh, let's continue practical in the next session. So I think hope you enjoy the video. So if you like the video, you can put a subscribe to the channel. I meet you soon. Have a great time. Right? Bye bye.